tuning in to the online broadcast network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hello, After Buzzers. My name is Stephanie Georgie, and you are watching Spotlight On with David De Santos. Hey there. Hello, welcome. Thank you Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. And congratulations on being on about every single network that's on television. Yeah, I still have a couple that I'm trying to get a little more in the basic cable, AMC and stuff, but we're, we're all right. We're doing <laughs> we're okay. No, I was actually looking to see which ones you were on and you were, which is good because they're all different uh, genres, if yeah, you will. Yeah. So your characters are definitely different Thanks. in all of that. Um, so why don't we begin with your background? You're a Los Angeles native. Born and raised. Born and raised, we're, San Fernando Valley. We're actually Valley. taping here in the San Fernando Valley, and I, I grew up uh, about three or four miles from where we're taping right now. Uh, I was, uh, when I went to Grant High School, I was in a, a, a Shakespeare um, competition. Park McAllister was my, was my teacher, and I remember we did a... Um, uh, there was a Shakespeare festival at Beverly Hills High, and uh, that's all. It was the only thing I ever wanted to do when I was a kid was be on stage and be doing Shakespeare. And so I got an opportunity to do that when I got into my twenties. It was great. Awesome. Was great. I, normally, I feel like when your family, because I, I hear everyone is in the industry with your family. Yeah. That I feel like sometimes people want to stay away from it, but it only. Well, you said the difference was that they're all post production. Everyone was post production. And you're the first one to be in front of. of and the I think if I had gone the post-production route. My dad was a film editor on um, uh, Star Trek to the uh, no Star Trek three. three the search for Scott the search for Scott no the search for Spock and uh, the first time I saw that movie was in a screening room with Leonard Nimoy and my oh, dad at Paramount and I remember <laughs> sitting there going this is really cool like this is the way to go to be hanging out with the director and the film editor and I can do this I from can now do this. on now but if I had gone the if I'd gone the path of post production it mm -hmm. would have been a really easy Moses parting the Red Sea it would right? have just been I would have been word like, of mouth grandfathered in it would exactly. have been really, oh, excuse me it would have been really easy to jump in mm -hmm. and uh like my grandma was a film editor on Gunsmoke, Gunsmoke and Hawaii Five O. Hawaii Five O, but she decided they moved the whole production to Hawaii in I can't remember what year, and she opted not to go because she was raising my mom. Oh, nice! And uh, if she had gone, who knows what would? But so she raised my mom. She went and became the film ed uh, the film librarian over at CBS for oh, nice. years. Uh, my grandpa worked as a film developer at CFI. My mom ran a small production company mm -hmm. and I was like, I don't want that. I'm going to be an actor. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go this route, which is almost impossible to make a living and, and it's just worked out Right, pretty, that's wonderful. Pretty well. That's very inspiring too. I, I mean, because your resume is fantastic. Thank you. And your the, all of the theater work that you have also, uh, that was the first thing. That's the first thing you did to get into acting or did you ever do commercials when you were younger or is that I how you started? never booked a commercial Although I found my first commercial headshots about three weeks ago, where we How have. How did you the, feel about that? It's pretty embarrassing. <laughs> There's like one with me holding a cheeseburger, and I'm sitting up against a fence, just kind of smiling, and then another one holding a racket ball, uh, a racket ball. Um, uh, uh, a racket, and I've got the headband, and I know they had sprayed some sweat on me, and I was kind of sitting up against the wall, going. <sighs> And then one but was with it? Me. Don't bother me. I'm hungry. <laughs> I don't know what it was. Or it's like, oh, isn't this? I want. Don't you want this? You want to buy a cheeseburger? The cheese, tomato, and lettuce. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. I think every actor should actually, at some point, go through all of their headshots over the years and put them all together, and they should put that into a book, like mm -hmm. a coffee table book of the most embarrassing right? headshot pictures of all to time. To see the growth. And then to see the growth. And uh, but I, I didn't go that route really um, it was theater though I remember my first job my first paying job was at the California Shakespeare Festival in Berkeley mm. and I um, 
I remember flying up there for a callback, or did I drive or flew? I can't remember. I was like 24 years old, and all I wanted was to work on a stage. And I had auditioned for this particular festival a couple of times and not gotten the job. And I went up for this callback, and I remember the artistic director, his name was Joe Vincent. When he came out for the callback, he said, okay, guys, who wants to play? Mm-hmm. And it took all of the uh, stigma attached to an audition. It, 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 it got rid of anything that was attached to that and said, oh, our job as artists, as, as actors, is you know, we tell stories, but it's also to play pretend. Right? We're, right. We're, we get into a sandbox and we build a sandcastle for a couple of hours. And we show you exactly how it was. Exactly, okay. right? Mm-hmm. And so... Um, I did this call back and and I left and I came back to LA and I was driving down Ventura Boulevard and I remember when I got the phone call and he he made the offer and uh, one of the parts was to play Edgar and King Lear. And I started to cry because right, uh, I bet. Oh, because no, that that's... was that part. That's that one part that 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 y- for me I was still really young and I was getting an opportunity to play a really great right. part on it was a really a great of stage. To Absolutely. You. <laughs> and also working with actors that um, had been at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival for the the guy who was our Lear in that particular production had been this famous actor at, at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival and other actors had been at OSF and I remember standing on that stage at Cal Shakes when I was 24 thinking all I ever want is to work at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. That's it. And I would look at these bios of these actors, and it would say they worked at South Coast Rep and Berkeley Rep and uh, Arena Stage and all of them. Which the, eventually you started... I got to yeah. work at and it. And, and, and when I was younger, they all seemed so intangible. Mm-hmm. Um, and then as I've gotten older, I, I just realized, oh, it's um, as long as we don't stop, right. right? as long as you don't throw in the towel, mm-hmm. that it happens... Progressively. And when it's supposed to, right. you know? Oh, I'm understood because well, I, that's what I keep telling myself that and well, just in general when you live in this city yeah. that you can't because every there will be every single obstacle in your way. However, it just all things come. There's also the moment when you way. realize there's enough for all of us. Right. There actually is enough. There are enough pieces of the pie for everyone. Um, and when I was younger, it felt like um, there's only three. Yeah, spots right. There's only three, and then the, the 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 older that that I've gotten, um, and the, the 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 more actors that have been I've, popping up. Yeah, and I've been able to work with, and I go, oh, these guys and gals have had thirty, forty, f- sometimes fifty years of work, mm-hmm. and you go, and they all started with um, one job. They all started with one job that they got as whether it was spear carrier number one or they got to play Edgar, whatever it was. There was that one job that made them go, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm going to do this, I'm an, and I'm going to stick with it. I don't know where it's going to go, but it, I'm in. Right. Yeah. You know, you being raised here, I'm surprised you like you having ever gotten sick of Los Angeles or because you've been able to travel with the theater, you've had your breaks. Yeah, I think it was that. Um, but, but it was also, I mean, it's home for you. So it's it different. Is home. Right. So I, but, but, but because of, um, my family, uh, I got to, s- I just, re- I remember seeing, um, a, the movie out of sight. It was a weird, I don't know why this just popped in with George Clooney and Jennifer Lopez. I remember yeah. watching it, and the editing was fantastic. And You're uh, like, oh, grandma. I'm just I did. Right? <laughs> and I went to my grandma, and the next m- m- morning, um, and I said, I saw this incredible movie. You'd love it. It's called Out of Sight. Uh, the editing was extraordinary. And she, she asked me who the editor was, and she I said it was. She was badass. It was pretty cool. I told her it was this woman named Ann V. Coates. And she goes, oh, Anne's one of the best film <laughs> editors that's ever lived. She goes, what is she doing, do, is she cutting a George Clooney movie? It must have been great if Anne said yes to it. And it's oh, it's a woman that her. my grandma had known for years. And I said, of I promise you, Anne V. Coates is going to be nominated for an Oscar when the when the Oscars come out. And sure enough, Anne V. Coates was nominated for Best Film Editing. And what I got from that, though, is because of my family's involvement in the post side, it allowed me to see movies and TV in a different, mm-hmm. um, in a different vein, in a different light. 
and almost to be able to like break down and study it. Absolutely. Okay. That's exactly right. To be able to realize that the actor is pretty important. Mm -hmm. Sure. Can't have the story without the actor, but without a film editor and a sound mixer and a color timer and all the things that go into making that story, um, that's the only way it's mm -hmm. going to come to fruition. When I first moved to Los Angeles, I was afraid that after being behind the scenes and yeah. seeing how things were made, that I wasn't going to enjoy movies the same. And for a little bit, I started analyzing and paying attention to the cuts and uh -huh. then thinking, oh, great, they ruined it for me forever until you see a good movie again. Yeah. And you're like, oh, just kidding. Yeah. Because that was done perfectly, and I forgot that I was watching a movie that I Absolutely. could have analyzed and broken down. The, 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 the best one right now is, is Birdman, if you've seen Birdman with uh, Michael Keaton. Oh, okay. Uh, um, uh, Inuratu is the the director, and they've got these shots. I didn't even know what the movie was, was about until Zach Galifianakis was on um, some talk show um, promoting it. And they have these 20 and 30 minute single camera handheld shots Oof. where they will go from the scene that's going on on the Broadway stage, the entire scene is played uh, in steady cam down a hallway into a dressing room, back into a hallway, go into another dressing room, back in one the hallway, shot. They're not cutting. One shot. And you sit there and you go, I'm going to find the magic cut. There's a magic cut in here somewhere, and it's not. And you go, it's the same thing when you watch a, a Woody Was Allen a movie? movie. Yeah, you see every. It's, but not, but like, not like where it's like, ah, oh, I'm gonna be sick, right? No, like no, no. It, it was wasn't just, static it was at all. Real. It, it, it was, was just... very, and you're 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 in the theater watching everything happen, and it is uh, another one of those game changers in mm -hmm. filmmaking when you go. I want to be part of that now. Yes, Whatever absolutely. movement that's going to be, because that's going to be the next movement now, I want to be part of that. So. Oh, I appreciate how passionately yeah, you thanks. watch them. I mean, uh, right in the city, we most of us do, if yeah, we're wanting to act. Yeah, sure. Um, no, awesome. And what other, what was your favorite, like, what did production, was you said you've always wanted to do uh, Kings of... Or what, what, was it well? No. Well, like, I, which theater production was your favorite? I, I would say King Lear is my favorite play, my favorite um, Shakespeare play, and I've been able to be in it twice. Um, I mean, but uh, you've done everything else. I there, you know, there's um, the, the my favorite story for me is is uh, I had gotten hired. Um, at Kansas City Rep. At the time, they were called Missouri Rep, and I got to do this world premiere of a play. And a couple years later, um, they were doing a production of King Lear, and uh, the director of that play was this guy, Larry Carpenter, and um, the, had a relationship with the casting directors, and I, um, they said, well, we're not coming out to Los Angeles. Is there any way you could come to New York? I said, yeah, sure, absolutely. And, and, and so I booked a flight, and I flew to New York, and... Um, and I did a couple of monologues for the director, and I, I think I got to do a scene or something, and I got cast as Edmund, which was the is the other mm -hmm. the other brother, and uh, they said that the Lear is this actor uh, Dennis Arndt, and Dennis had directed the Lear that I did at California Shakespeare Festival. Oh wow! So now it's about ten. Did you know that before going there? No. Oh, that's so it's, funny. So it's about like seven, eight, nine, or ten years later or something. And so now the man who directed me in Lear is now playing Lear, and Larry Carpenter. Uh, it's just funny when you sort of put everything out and you see how it all. You can look at it with twenty twenty vision from the outside. Some years later, Larry is uh, directing. He asked me to be a part of uh, a production of the Scottish play, Macbeth, which is here in Los Angeles. And, of course, I said yes. I hadn't worked with him for a while, and it was fantastic. And then fast forward, um, he's one of the staff directors on General Hospital. And so I <laughs> was able to right. do some General Hospital that Larry directed me. And none of that would have happened had I not jumped on a plane and flown out to Los Angeles but then if you go even further, if I had not driven up to the California, Berkeley, to Berkeley. Right. And when I was in my 20s, that seemed so such an impossible uh, equation to mm -hmm. sort of put together. I mean, it sounds like it. But then if you just sort of stick Look, around, right. it, it, it ends up, we all end up having that story where you go. Yes, I have a story. I have a story. <laughs> right. That's great. 
Yeah, true. No, of course, absolutely. It's true. Every, that's what everyone's waiting for. They're like, when can I be on Driven on VH1? <laughs> when, I, when are they going to come and like interview me for everything that I've done in my life? No, of course. Uh, okay, so now moving on from theater, yeah. which uh, that was most of your practice. Do you do you love doing theater? Do you also love it. Uh, film is equal love? It's just two different. It, just it's it's just a different uh, it's just a different medium. It's taking everything that you do on stage, and there was this old, older actor from the Oregon Shakespeare Festival who used to say that when you work on stage, you come out if you, and you have to um, and you have to drink something you throw the door open, you drink it back, and you slam the the, the, gla- the mug on the table. If you're in TV, you open the door gently, and you pick up the glass, and you take a drink, and you set it down gently. And if you're doing film, you don't open the door, right. and you don't pick up the glass, and you think about drinking, and that's it. Does that make sense? That actually right. blew my mind a little yeah. bit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Only because I remember taking a class also, and it was in theater, and he was saying, you'd be great if the camera was right here. And he started surrounding me so close. He's like, but it's not. Yeah. We're all over here. Yeah. This is something completely different. And I was like, okay. And it was so hard for me to like understand it and get it sure. to, to be able to, because I always, I'm someone who projects very well. So I didn't understand why that was what he was telling me I was doing wrong, that yeah. I wasn't projecting. I was like, you're kidding, man. Are you, are you serious? And then, no, I mean, yeah. that, that makes more sense. Yeah. Because it's a different, it's a visual and just, performance aspect is all different. Absolutely. Wonderful. Um, for, as far as television goes, what was your favorite show that you worked on? I, there's two. I mean, definitely... What was the first one you worked on? The first ever? Uh, Were you like, yes, TV. It was, an, it was a TV show called... Um, I think I'd just gotten my SAG card, and I, I it was something called Seven Days. Okay. Uh, Seven Days, which was some sci-fi show. I was biker number two. Let's say I was biker number two, okay. but I might have been biker number three. <laughs> and uh, there was this actor named Jeff Kober who played this like weird Native American who shows up in town, and he I can't remember what his story, but he could control the weather and stuff. And uh, it's so funny. Twenty years later, Jeff Kober would teach me how to meditate. <laughs> I saw that in your skills, I, yoga. <laughs> Jeff Kober um, is a meditator, and, and I'm in I'm in New York um, in 2011, just kind of hanging out. And a friend of mine sends me a message saying, "Hey, would if um, Jeff and I didn't know who Jeff was, but Jeff's in town doing a teaching on meditation." Uh, do you want to join? And I was like, eh, whatever. Yeah, sure. And I go in and I sit down and it's Jeff Kober, who I had, uh, I think pretended, I think we pretended to beat him up or punch him or something <laughs> in seven days. And I was sitting there and he was talking about meditation and I went, okay, I have to have him teach me if nothing else, because I understand there's something bigger here. Right. There's no way that 20 years later I'm going to run into my first acting job is now a meditation teacher. Yeah. So we laugh about that still. So that was like the first one. But the, um, earlier this year, I started working on uh, Ray Donovan. Right. And... <clears throat> You're Carlo- Talk I, to us about I, Carlos. Yeah, I, I play um, Carlos, but really I play Anne margarets mm-hmm. gigolo boyfriend. And um, when I That's got... That's right, Bobby. Come on. Yay. You no problem with <laughs> hey, Carlos. Hey, this is a Margaret. I don't care that she's a little bit older than me. <laughs> I'm a gigolo. Uh, but I remember getting the part. No, it was right before I had gotten the part they announced on Deadline Hollywood that Anne Margaret was set to play this character, June. I was like, oh, that's really cool. And Margaret's going to be on Ray Donovan. Sweet. Fast forward a couple of weeks later, and and, and I see my audition, and, and I'm speaking about June, and I'm going, could that be? Oh, yeah, that's probably not. There's no, it's not. How exciting. Uh, and, and, and it was, and it, and it is. Um, the, the best part was finding out that I was going to be half naked. Um, absolutely. Well, absolutely, that's the best part. <laughs> I guess I should have worded that a slightly <laughs> a bit differently. How can we have naked <laughs> remark with June? Yes. But it was that it was when Anne Margaret said, um, "Are you excited to be half naked with me?" And I went, 
I'm sorry? <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually getting a little warm right now sitting here. <laughs> but uh, she is, uh, uh, she's an icon. That would uh, be nice for her. To, I would feel better if she said that to me. Oh, she's so sweet. Yeah. Um, and I have a friend of mine who still daily sends me uh, an Anne Margaret picture. Mm -hmm. He'll find somewhere off of Tumblr or something, and I get these random pictures of Anne Margaret with a tiger or on a motorcycle <laughs> from the 50s and 60s and 70s. Uh, what does it say? Yo, it's your girl. No, it's just it's just the it's just the picture, and 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 it's uh, and it's more of yeah. This Look is, at her. This is your girl. This is your girl. Uh, I when we came on set, when she came on set that first day, it was. Uh, everything hushed, and 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 even uh, Liev, you could feel um, it was undeniable mm -hmm. that Anne Margaret's uh, just an icon, mm -hmm. not well past celebrity, right. well past movie star, and and is just icon. So it's been a gift to be in 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 her world as well. Did you? Uh, I want to assume who is there anyone that you've been able to like take from or learn from? Um, uh, I mean, I mean it was everyone, of course, but <clears throat> specifically any like moments that you've had with anyone? Yeah, it was uh, it was with Leo Schreiber. I I um, have known his work for the for years. Um, I even had a one of those vision boards that I I did some. Uh, a decade ago or something that I still have framed somewhere in my apartment. And there's a little picture of Liev when he played um, Macbeth mm -hmm. at the uh, public, I don't know, 15 years ago, 10 years ago. And I just have it there amongst other little images. And uh, when we showed up on set that first day, just listening to Liev break down this particular scene with him and me and Anne Margaret, uh, was so um, <clears throat> analytical and also so creative, and I just sort of stepped back and stepped back and listened to him break down this scene, and I was like, "I'm getting a master class right now with <clears throat> Anne Margaret okay. and Liev, and also, <clears throat> excuse me, and Anne Bitterman, the executive producer and creator. It, it was mostly him, and I got to work with Edward James Olmos also, which." was also pretty special. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it was a show called American Family, um, and he almost, I don't want to say he funded the show himself, but he helped, was Producing one of the main that. producers. <clears throat> and he was so familial and so um, engaging and supportive, whether it was background, whether really? it Really? Yeah. You see, I'm always worried about that, because I, I know that it's absolutely different for everyone, and that some people are completely but, just... Edward James almost you could tell that it wasn't that we were on his set right. at all. It was that we were all on each other's set. And we were working together we for a project. We were all working Absolutely. together. And and um, that one was pretty special. I bet. Yeah. Oh man. Is there anyone that you'd like to work with that you that not necessarily like a long term thing where it's a there's a possibility that you're hoping to work with or so many. Right. I mean, I, I. Anything that you're trying to get right now? Um, I that, love to write down um, actors and directors that that I'm passionate about. I don't know if you've got a chance. Oh, do to, you? Re do you? Really yeah, yeah. Kinda. It's just it, it. It's there's a show that. <clears throat> excuse me, called Transparent, mm -hmm. which just premiered on Amazon, which is amazing in and of itself that Amazon Studios is producing really good content. But the um, the creator of that, Jill Soloway, I've been obsessed with everything that was attached to Six Feet Under. Mm, okay. And Jill Soloway was one of the writers and executive producers of that show. Um, and so it, it becomes any of the actors or any of the writers from the Six Feet Under days, Peter Krause, uh, Michael C. Hall, Freddie Rodriguez, as far as um, writers are concerned, mm -hmm. Alan Ball, which he was one of the showrunners of Banshee, which I I've, I've you're done. On. It'll be in season three. And I went, oh, okay, cool. Alan Ball, great. My, my Six Feet Under uh, uh, challenge has begun. Nice. But uh, as silly as it sounds, I sent Jill Soloway a tweet. Uh, this is the the, it's how you the do world it. of social it, it, media. Absolutely. And Jill Soloway absolutely. favorited one of my tweets, and I was like, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I, I, all right, <laughs> there 
there we go. It, it's it's continuing. Everyone knows that feeling <laughs> when you get your tweet favorited. I, I, we love I, it. I had I, Jill Soloway favorited my tweet. I sort of fell back. I went, all right, here we, this. I don't know what's in, what's it, next. It's, it's sad that it's gotten there, but then it's also wonderful that we have the opportunity to be able to communicate with everyone in that way. Absolutely. So that there's just that much more of a chance. And yeah, I have nice. friends that still have not jumped on the Twitter train, and it's fine. Right. I, I was so against it at the beginning. Likewise. And then the moment I jumped in, I went, oh, if I, I don't have to, this doesn't have to be about complaining about a breakup. There's actually this other. I mean, promote yourself, say whatever. And that's the good thing about tweets, because it's literally, you're just. And sometimes you can. Whatever. The good thing about 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 Twitter, as opposed to text messaging, is you can still sometimes post. Indirect. The, the, well, you can still sometimes post the, the 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 tweet and go, ooh, actually I can't post that. You can quickly right. hit delete. And you're like, there's that moment. You do have that five second. If someone happens to be on it in that moment and mm -hmm. sees it, they're going to catch it. Right. Really. Otherwise, you know. Anyway, not that I've ever sent a text message oh. that I wish you didn't I could send. have sent back. That's never happened. <laughs> I'm sure it's never happened for you either. So I'm, I'm, I'm feel like it has maybe <laughs> ah, once. once. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, yeah, Twitter. That's that's so funny. I was against it completely, also, but it just it helps. It In does. fact, the second that I decided, or when I noticed that it really did make a difference, especially because there's a very specific age group that runs mm -hmm. the world, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. teenage girls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I told myself I was like, okay, just don't look at it as a trend. Look at it as connecting with those who maybe follow me or have an interest in me and then it, it honestly did start helping more absolutely. followers absolutely and, well, and my I look at my little nephews who are uh, nine and <clears throat> three <clears throat> my nine-year-old nephew will never know a world prior to that, Isn't that unbelievable my three-year-old nephew will never understand that there was a time when we used to, we used to have to pick up the phone that was connected to a wall and 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 you think well if that's the case then better sort of stick with mm -hmm. the 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 common push you you know so Sad and Jill saw the way favorite a tweet of mine. So, so really, at worked. the end of the day, it's the best thing it that's worked. ever it happened. It absolutely worked. I mean, and just to throw it out there, I want to name, just so everyone knows, some of the shows that you can find yourself. You, Banshee, Ray Donovan, Days of Our Lives, Literally Dysfunctional. It's a web series. Web yeah. series. Yeah. This is another web series. Uh, this is Why I'm Single. Yeah. Torchwood, Pretty Little Liars. Yeah. You were Mendez on that? Well, what's funny about social media with that is I remember tweeting. Oh, yeah, because anyone that's on that show, they'll Oof. they'll see you for like a second and be like, who's that? So I got on, I got to Warner Brothers at, uh, whatever, 5 o'clock in the morning, and I sent a little a little tweet saying, couldn't be happier about showing up on set for hashtag PLL yeah, there you go. for season two. <laughs> Press send. And I go to the trailer, I put, in, put on a costume, and I go out, and I come back, and there are my Twitter, you know, a hundred new followers, mm -hmm. all these questions. What are you doing there? What's yep. going on? I went, oh, I got to be careful here because there's a whole other world. Oh, absolutely. A whole other world. And I, I was <laughs> just introduced to Pretty Little Liars because I do the Fosters after show for this great. network. And everyone was show. like, Stephanie, if you love the Fosters, watch Pretty Little Liars. All our view my viewers just kept telling me, and I was like, no, I don't want to watch it. I don't want to watch it. Obsessed, and you? I watched it. I bought the and six. I watched the in. spin off. And What's then the spin? Oh, Ravenswood. Ravenswood yeah. with Tyler Blackburn. And I was like, you're oh, in. great. I'm and hooked. You're in. I can't help it. There's also a show that, that, um, that I, I, I'm, I'm in production with right now called The Red Road, um, which is on Sundance. Yes, that's I was going <clears> to ask about that next. Oh, it's, I thought it was Red Rock. It's Red oh, Road. Red Road, yeah. Red Road. The, the okay. Red Road, um, produced by Sundance. It was it, again. We're at this really wonderful time with TV, where nothing against network TV. God, God bless it. But there's so many other networks where it used to be HBO was the only thing. Now you go Netflix, Amazon, mm -hmm. Hulu. I mean, you've been on Cinemax, Showtime, Stars, ABC, see, cool. everything. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And and now Sundance, which That's we're in production cool. right now. And, <laughs> which and, is incredible. <laughs> yeah. It's cool. And I know that, for example, this season, there's a, a show that's starting um, called uh, Powers. And Powers is Sony PlayStation's first 
television show, and it's only going to be available. It might be available on Sony.com, but it's Sony PlayStation only. And you go like a binge watching type of a thing. Absolutely. Okay. So it'll, it, and it's a uh, which it's, is another nuts thing. That's I watch Transparent in a day. Jill yeah. Soloway, if you're out there, yeah, just so you're aware, I saw it in one day, just so you know. We'll tweet that later, we'll too. She's going to hear us. Again. We're going to get another favorite, I promise. That was actually the tweet. It basically just said, um, I, I, dear Jill Soloway, I hope you won't judge me for watching uh, Transparent All in one I day. day I did. And she pressed favorite, and I'm like, great, so she doesn't judge me. And I used my E24 app, so it was good to go in the house. <laughs> Um, no, also, you also did uh, Numbers, Ugly Betty, CSI House, CSI Miami, Crossing Jordan, American Family, General Hospital, and Spider Games. To go right back up to Ugly Betty, do you, just because it's like a, I'm Latina, yeah. so I have to ask. Sure, sure, sure. Have you, like, what are, have you tried to do any, like, do you do any, like, I mean, I know you do some dialects and whatnot, but. Any See. But but I was not, I was raised by my good Jewish mother in the San Fernando Valley. But I so I, I I was not raised by my Mexican father. Uh, so that is a problem. As I've gotten a little bit older in my life, is that do you speak any Spanish? Th that is the problem. Is that my, dialect, my dialect is is perfect depending on where I'm supposed to be from. But I don't speak a lick of the Spanish because I was raised by uh, my little Jewish family. Yes, here in I Valley. understand. Do you understand? So there's no judgment, right? There's no judgment, but you do it very good. Don't worry. <laughs> It's so funny. I had uh, I had auditioned for um, Jane the Virgin. Oh, I do the after show version. Awesome, um, yeah. which I love. It is so fan It's it is a breath of fresh air that it, show. It really is. It actually just like Ugly Betty was this. Where did this come from? Exactly. Show. I know Jane Betty the... La Fea is actually before Ugly Betty came on. It's yeah. derived from a novela yeah. in Colombia, yeah. but where I'm from, and uh, there. It was called Betty de la Fea. When I was younger, I was obsessed with that novela. The only one I've ever been obsessed with. Yeah. And when it came on, I the only thing I can think of was that, one, I can't believe they're doing it in America. Yeah. And two, I was like, oh, Colombia is cool. It is, like, we do oh, produce awesome. great things. Just because I was, I always had this complex of, like, not being cool because I was I came from minority family. Yeah. And yeah. then I was like, oh, we're doing big things. We've made it to Hollywood. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, what? Salma Hayek is producing it? Yeah. yeah. What about, because Jane the Virgin was also from a telenovela. Well. It was. It was from, and I did this after doing the research. It's from uh, Venezuelan. Uh, okay. And it was Juana La Virgen. Amazing. And, yeah. I'm having so much fun with it. There was, but there was this. <laughs> what did you? Uh, did you? Can, are you? Well, I can't tell. I can't. I can't say what it, what it's for. But um, I, I didn't get the job. Um, but my friend uh, did get the job, and he is fluent in Spanish. What's his name? Well, I can't tell you what okay. his name. I can't, I can't tell you anything about it. But he's fluent in Spanish. He's actually a telenovela star. Oh, okay. But, ah, I think I know. But he's also uh, white, which is amazing. He's, he's totally American, who happens to be, and this is the funny joke that he had on set, was that he's totally American, but he is fluent in Spanish and this massive novella star. And I can't tell, you'll... You'll meet him in a couple of episodes, I'm sure. Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to talk to you about it after this. All right, fine, fine, fine. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I'll get the scoop. Yeah. Maybe I might mention it later. Uh, no, she won't. I won't. No, I'm she just really kidding. won't. <clears throat> but uh, we laughed about it. I was like, wow, well, I didn't even, I, you know. Anyway, so it's funny. Yeah. That's He's good. fluent in Spanish and I'm not, and whatever. It's all right. Every, most people don't think I'm Spanish, and then I start speaking Spanish. Like, wait, what? <laughs> I'm like, I, you didn't know? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, okay. And so now that's pretty much all of like for television. Yeah. We, you did your film in 2014, the most yeah. recent one. Yeah. Uh, when the game stands tall, playing yeah. Mike Blasquez, Blasquez who yeah. is a former. He's at Cal Poly right now. He 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 was at uh, he was he was at De La Salle High School. Now he's at Berkeley. He's okay. And the head of the, or he is the head of the the strength and conditioning. He's the actually he's the head of the entire athletic department, department. in Berkeley. Um, when I started production, which was last May, what was it? Yeah, last May in New Orleans, I somehow found his uh, email address up in Berkeley. I, I sort of stalked him and uh, sent him an email saying, "As you should, you should, right? Absolutely. It's to, it's research." research. <laughs> Right? right? It's research. It's not stalking. It is, exactly. <clears throat> but I sent that first email to him saying, um, I know this is weird, but um, I'm going to play you in a movie. And, Let's uh, kick it, man. Let me know all about you. Come on, brother. 
That's exactly what it was, just without a little of the without oh, without, 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 without me without without, being but I just didn't do this. But it was the same thing, I just without the shoulder shake. Right. Uh, but he wrote back and gave me his phone number, and we. I remember the first phone call was. Well, he had to have been stoked. Yeah, it was pretty cool. He was so grateful and could not say. It, it, all he was saying was praise for this project and the book that was written. It was based off a book called When the Game Stands Tall mm-hmm. that was written by Neil Hayes, which sort was of... It a, was it a student who wrote it or just a standby? No, Neil Hayes used to write for the Contra Costa Times. Okay. Or maybe he still writes for the Contra Costa Times. And he had followed De La Salle okay. uh, through their streak. Mm-hmm. The streak lasted for 12 years, 151 and games. And he saw something and wrote it. Somewhere in the beginning, in the middle of the streak, he would, uh, well, he would always be writing about this team, the De La Salle Spartans, and there would always be articles about him and the coach, uh, Bob Latticer and Terry Edson, who was the assistant coach, and a handful of, like, um, Amani Toomer went to uh, the Giants. He was a De La Salle Spartan. And, hmm. and he would just write these articles. Then somewhere around 2004, I think, he wrote this beautiful um, biography, this this history of this team. Mostly, not I shouldn't say mostly about Bob Latticer, but really revolved around Latticer's coaching. Mm-hmm. And then it dealt with the year that they lost the streak. Mm-hmm. After 151 consecutive games, you're oh, bound know. to lose a yeah 12 years and 151 games of of winning of winning. Oh well, <clears throat> there's a story. Right there, somewhere in there, yeah. there's a story. <laughs> She's Louise. And then the team that lost. It right. Was, and, and it was a and so our movie focuses on the team that that lost that 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 lost that first game, and then they lost the second game, and then it oh, was about so like but but a, with all. Sports That's stories. That's like pressure. I'm already stressed out thinking yeah? about it. Yeah. But then, but you know. <laughs> how but, did we lose? Right. No. But it becomes the sports story of how well, of do course. you how do you get back up? Mm-hmm. Um, and so very beautiful. Then everything was just nice. Yeah, and we were talking yes. about editing when you th- when it was assembled the movie when we when we finally saw it. I went, if if this is edited properly, it's going to be a really moving movie. Right. And sure enough, it was. I, a couple of friends of mine saw it with me, and Wonderful. a couple of them were crying. That. That's Thanks. Lovely. Awesome. Uh, are you in for any other movies or like features? Uh, Films? Is, yeah. wait, is this one that's Sundance or no? No, Sundance is still television. Yeah, right, right, right. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to yeah. say that. Um, what are, what well, there's is, one that I, uh, I... No, where did this one go through? What did you do for the festival? Like, how did or has it gone anywhere yet? Sundance, uh, the Sundance is actually it's on the Sundance Network mm-hmm. uh, on television. Okay. So that'll be I, I think the season of the Red Road. Are we talking about? No, no, no. I'm sorry about when the game. Oh, when the game. Oh, yeah, that came out this July. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and it had a f- it had a full. We had a good. We we yeah, yeah we. Everything did all right. Okay. We did all right. We beat Sin City. I remember, th- but Guardians of the Galaxy mm-hmm. was still had come out two weeks before, and everyone was still seeing that. I remember my Twitter was, "You've already seen Guardians of the Galaxy, so go see yeah. when the game stands tall." You're there. You're there. <laughs> it comes out on on demand. Um, I think on November 25th, it'll be on iTunes and DVD. Oh, so, perfect. So yeah. there's that. There's that plug. There you go. There you go. Remember. November 25th. On or around. All around. <clears throat> So we've covered television, we've covered film, and now another thing that you do, voiceovers. Voice, yeah, and one really cool uh, project that's coming out in Battle March. Hardline. Yeah, which is so rad. I, I, I did performance capture for this video game. I, it is. Um, was it gnarly to see? Did you get to see it while you're doing it? <coughs> see what your little guy was doing? They put up a no, but they. In the, they call it the volume, which is the room you work in, which is basically just um, a square on a floor. You're in a huge sound studio type thing, surrounded by this particular shoot. We were surrounded by 280 or 350 cameras um, that all have a red light on the top, and the red light shoots an infrared sensor. To capture what you're doing. So all you do, you have the, you have your face <laughs> and all the points, and you have, um, you have uh, the points on your, um, on your eyelids and in every part of your face, down your body and on your hands. You're closing your eyes right now. What's the visual that you have? 
Are you just imagining it hitting you, or yeah, I, I, I are you just, remembering it? Well, what I'm trying to remember is I re- the, the the funniest part was when they put the three on your eyeball, not on your eyeball, but on your eyelids, and then they took me over to the eye monitor computer because there's when you're. Um, Outside of the volume, there's about 13 computers that everyone's sort of working on that they're downloading the information. And there's one particular one that's just monitoring your eyeballs. Oh, my gosh. And he said... It's all uh, so technical. This sounds like for you, Stephen. It's crazy, though, but it becomes one of those dream come true things, right, Steve? Yeah? Yeah. He's, yeah he's, Thumbs up, I don't know. Man. The fact that he even brought that up, I was like, oh, of course, Thumbs a game. Thumbs up. <laughs> I've I've since gone in to do some uh, voiceover, some ADR after, um, and th- uh, they've. Sh- that sounds. I've super seen intense, some stuff though. like right. and, and and there was a part where there's an explosion, not giving anything away, but I remember how we shot it, and it's all make believe. They'll tell you where the car is coming from, where the explosion is. You're sitting in a bus. So it's really you. Yeah, it's it's gonna it is, <laughs> it's there, you. there's a the mouth is moving with exactly to what you're doing because it has to look that's well because it's, there were sensors right. on my lips the hairline looks the same and it's but we thought there was a day years ago when I remember actors going oh you know this CGI stuff it's gonna mm-hmm. render us useless and instead it's actually More made it work. I would imagine that. I mean, if you've seen, though, Planet of the Eight. I was just going to use that example. That's that's what I was imagining right now. Dude, it's I just want to go down and do my ape walk. Do it. No. Right now, no, <laughs> right here on the table. Right here on the table. You're good. I just watched it last night. It's the, the newer one? The newer one. There's a link somewhere out there on the interwebs on the YouTube <laughs> on, on somewhere on the YouTube on the interwebs, there's a. Somewhere on the. I, on I the, remember right. when you had to. Click on the magnifying glass and there's someone edited uh, the five main um, actors that Koba, Blue Eyes, obviously Andy Serkis as uh, Caesar Mm -hmm. and uh, the the woman who plays Maurice. I don't know if you know that. It's, um, it's no, absolutely. I'm. It's a no. young woman who's around, I think, late thirties. She plays Maurice, and so what they did in the video is about a two-minute video that has the ape, the well, the actor in their CGI, well, in their performance capture, wearing the camera. That one's a much more high tech, where there's a camera right in front mm-hmm. of you as well, and you're in your suit. And then the counterpart of the actual scene from the movie with the ape. And you see the two actors. All I can pay attention to. But here's the thing. It's incredible. Every every motion, every move, every sound that Andy Serkis and all of those genius artists are doing is exactly what happened in the movie. So for us to go, oh, the actors, they're not real. At some point, Academy, Andy Serkis has whether he's going to be nominated for an Oscar. It's funny you say that because I was watching it with a friend and we were laughing because we were watching him act and I was like, why does he got swag? He Even his signs, like everything what he was doing, I, I was so, I, this is why I was happy when you were talking about when you watch and analyze how passionate yeah. you are about it because I had that exact moment last night. So close to the screen and just paying attention to everything that everything. you're doing. It's, it's almost, not envious, but like, oh, I want to do that. It's yeah. unbelievable. It's so beautiful to and, watch. And circus, uh, well, all of them in that. Every oh, time. You them your video game. That's awesome. Every time their eyes blink. Right. That's what's happening. That's what's happening. So there's no in in the just think. I guess the best way to put it now is just think of it's a costume. Mm-hmm. It's a computer generated costume, but the actor inside the costume. It's just imagine. It, it's right. just 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 let go of the idea that it's computer mm-hmm. hair. Because it, the actor is doing everything, everything else. Absolutely, that's the one. Everything I'm else. happy you brought that to light because I was for a second I was like, ah, I don't everything know. Everything else, and, and 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 having the been in the process of having the opportunity to do it on a smaller scale. Mm-hmm. Battlefield is it's still um, video game, so it has an. Anim- what uh, what game console? 
uh, I guess it's PS. All of them, right? All of them, right? All of them? Okay. Hardline. Steve, do you know? Is it? Yeah, here you go. Yeah. All of them. All okay. of them. I think PS3. Cool. Did I, is that a real yes. thing? It's PS4. PS4. <laughs> I think it's PS4. <laughs> My nephew just got one for his for his birthday, and we played uh, Madden. Mm-hmm. I hadn't yeah. played Madden since '95. Oh, so you were like, "Wait, what's going on? These are real players. This is the real thing." It was the real this thing. This isn't a Plus, video game. <laughs> I felt like the old man sitting there with my nine-year-old nephew. He's like, "David, what come is on. the X? What are you doing? How do I get him to kick? Why is he doing all these other things?" <laughs> I can imagine for you, it's all right. It's all right. It's you all right. know, you'll, be, you'll right. get through. I can, I can also say, "Hey, little nephew, I'm in a video <laughs> game coming up, so just relax." I'm a working professional actor. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't have time for video games. <laughs> I do. I wish I do have time. I do. I'm pretty good at FIFA. It's FIFA, not FIFA. Fi FIFA. Uh, no, I get that. I was <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, poor you. Okay, sh let's not talk about newer things anymore. I'm kidding. Um, okay, so other than um, Battlefield Hardline, you, you're the cast recording. I'm going to go ahead and bring up that you. Not you specifically, but your the whole cast was nominated for a Grammy. Yeah, yeah. What, uh, That's incredible. And, spoken word audiobook for Hamlet. Yeah, in 2010, the the production of of Hamlet that that uh, we did at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. Uh, there's this audio book company called Blackstone Audio. They had been they've produced many audio books and productions. They came to OSF and they said we want to. Produce the or we want to produce this production of Hamlet and um, this extraordinary actor Dan Donahue, who uh, if you don't know him you should uh, played or plays Hamlet in that production and um, we had a really solid cast. May I ask who you I played Laertes. Okay, and um, so basically I just s screamed a lot and, right. and cried over my dead sister. Aww. It's all I did uh, for a year, but it, it, we did this production not knowing what was going to happen and I'm like yeah. Well, just do this thing and then we get a letter that it's been nominated for a Grammy for a spoken word. Uh, the problem though is that we're up against Tina Fey, Smarty oh. Pants and uh, Betty White. Right. So Betty White, uh, when when we Betty White won the Grammy. Betty, what are you doing here? Come on, Come on. give me a chance. You got you you've had you've had <laughs> Emmys. You've had everything. You got everything, <laughs> and now you won a Grammy. And it turns out now she has everything. No, she does. She uh, that was the one thing she was like, I am gonna get me that I'm damn Grammy. Out, and, right? I got a Tony <laughs> Award. I got an Emmy. I'm gonna get that Grammy. I wish. I hope one day I can meet her and hug her. That's, That's all I all want. We want. That's, That's all, all we want. anybody <laughs> wants. That is all. Any Anybody wants a friend of mine. Tyler was on the the. Someone uh, needs to get her on Twitter. I'm sh some so we, she can oh at least favor us. Imagine one of those tw those the tweets that Betty White would send out would be the most genius, inappropriate, wonderful but tweets. wonderful tweets in the world. She'd be retweeted for days. For days. <laughs> My friend Tyler was on one of, was on uh, 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 Hot in Cleveland, and uh, he. Um, Told a joke. He he had some guest star, and he told uh, one joke at the end of the scene, um, <laughs> and he hit it really, really well. He hit the joke perfectly, and he said that his he could have died from this moment forth because Betty White turned to him in between takes and said, "You nailed that joke." Oh and he was my like, God! We're good. Done. I'm. We're done. I quit. I love you so much. I Thank quit. you. We're good. You did. That's it. Betty White just favorited my joke. So, right. Good job. Aw, that sounds great. But uh, she did still beat us for did. a Grammy. Yeah, it's all right though. I, I'm pretty sure everyone's reaction was exactly mine. Was the first time you right. told me. Right. right. Well, I mean, what are you gonna do? Yeah, and you're not gonna Nothing. fight Betty White because she'd <laughs> yeah. kick your ass. Exactly. She would. <laughs> exactly. She absolutely would. Um, Am I allowed to say that? Was I? Uh, yeah, it's you're the, right. It's on the internet. It's it's we're good to go. Okay. I mean, if you all heard it, forgive us for cursing. I apologize wholeheartedly. Is so anything else then? Uh, well, anything recently? Yeah, we're just, we're just doing... still recurring on on Red Road, so still in production for that. Um, I narrate audio books on the side, which awesome. is like my little side job. And uh, do you really? What kind of like what like what kind of books? Yeah, right. Uh, I just finished one yesterday called um, the House of Wolf, which is about. Um, 
gun traders uh, dealing with kidnapping, and it, and part of it take place in Mexico. And oh. I had to. Do you do all the voices? Yeah, I oh, had to do wonderful. a lot of the voices. So just... sometimes he was here, sometimes he was up here, and there's <laughs> other ones he knew. Uh, yeah, so lovely. <laughs> and then part of it took place in Texas, so there was a. I had to do a little. Of the, I ended up just sound like. You're just this, the narrator. You're like the ones in the we're right now in the movies. Yeah. Once upon a time. That's his, like Jane, Jane the Virgin. Yeah. Yes, 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 that's our, what our I was trying to think about. Our story begins when Jane was... <laughs> exactly. I'll that's do that and... Ah, and, and, oh, you and, should have gotten the narrator. I did send in an audition for that. Oh, man. <laughs> what is going on here? You know? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, wonderful. Well... Thank you so much Thank you. for coming in. I hope we got everything that we could get out of you. Um, otherwise, where can they find you on social media? Uh, my Twitter handle is Ashland DeSantos, A-S-H-L-A-N-D, like the, the town, Ashland DeSantos. I'm on Instagram. Instagram? And the same thing, Ashland yeah. DeSantos is me, and there you go. And that's it? Yeah. All right. Um, all right, viewers, if you have any questions about David DeSantos, please feel free to tweet me and ask any questions. When you watch the video, discuss. I'll be more than happy to discuss anything with you otherwise you can find me on twitter at stephanie georgie g-i-o-r-g-i and on instagram at steffi g47 david thank you so much for being pleasure. here thanks for having and me and we'll see y'all later buzz later from executive producers maria menounos kevin undergaro phil svitek and the entire AfterBuzz tv staff we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz tv network to watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. i'm sir richard Wentz. And this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.